Hi everyone, welcome to 5 More Minutes Home Learning Edition. Today we are talking about countdown strips. Oh, friends. I'm so sorry. I have my blanket today because it's cold. So I am, oh man. So last week was such a gong show. I have to tell you, I missed the Thursday video because my dog got so sick. He was so sick, he was puking. So I apologize. But I also have to tell you that I have to change the schedule a little bit because I'm having a hard time keeping up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our five more minute videos every Tuesday, okay? Because two a week is hard for me to keep up. So we're gonna do videos every Tuesday. And then you just get videos for a longer amount of time, which means we just get to stay connected for longer, which is just so fantastic. So Tuesdays are gonna be videos, it's gonna be so great. So today we are talking about countdown strips. Now, um, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing COVID hair, but I finally had to put the clips in, but I gotta show you these clips, look at them. You see them? They're bowling pin clips! What? Someone, Sarah, actually, in my book club sent them to me, look. They, she called them outside bobby pins. Come on. So I've been wearing them with pride every day. They're helping me do hard things, okay. So today we're talking about countdown strips. This is the last in our visual support series. We're going to move on to another strategy next week. So today we're talking about countdown strips, which is another great visual support. And one that you will find, it's sometimes called different things. Sometimes it's called a countdown strip. Sometimes it's called a transition strip. But basically it's something that helps to define a period of time that's really useful when kids have to move from one activity to another, okay? Because sometimes that happens really sharply, okay? Um, I know when, when I first got married, we had to pull out this whole concept because um, sometimes I get really like super focused on something. I like to call it passion fire. And I don't want to be... I I don't want it to stop ever but then you know there's life and so me and Jessica would always get into like little fights because she'd be like Shelly I need you to fold the laundry and I'm like I can't even hear her I'm so focused right and so she's just like I need you to fold the laundry and I'd be like I can't I am busy I don't want to fold the laundry and then she would get upset and then I would get upset and so we realized a really good strategy for me was using the countdown strip because she'd be like Shelly I need you to fold the laundry in five minutes. And I'd be like, nah, nah, how about seven? Negotiation works, my friend. She's like, fine. And then she'd come and check in with me. She'd be like, okay, Shelly, four more minutes. And I'd be like, nah. okay. So then that's telling me, it's helping me try to transition. And she's counting down. So then she knows one more minute. That means I need to wrap up what we're doing. So a transition strip is something that's really heavy or countdown strip is something to transition someone because sometimes it's really hard to abruptly stop something in the moment. Okay, so that's really what it's useful for. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, why don't we just get an app that counts down time? Well, I'm going to tell you that a, at a countdown strip, what's nice about it is that it, it, it communicates the passage of time in a, in a visual and tactile way, which is sometimes really useful. But also the benefit is, is that if it's not actual time, then you can determine what the time is, okay? So sometimes kids have a hard time, uh, for example, just with a countdown timer because uh, you can't be responsive with real time, like a minute is a minute, right? But if I'm working with the student and they're having a hard time getting off, I can be like, okay, four more minutes, but in my head I'm like, they're gonna need more than four minutes. I can manipulate that depending on the student and respond to the student. And so when we look at countdown strips, they can be used like numbers, but they can also just represent time passing. So you can use numbers, you can use just like tokens. Sometimes I like to use like poker chips with Velcro, like just to show kids that time is passing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a minute. Another way that's really useful is like, say for example, you're like, okay, you forget to transition. And so you're like, okay, we gotta get in the car, we gotta get in the car right now. And if someone needs a five minute countdown, but you don't have five minutes, then you can make a minute shorter than a minute, but they still get their transition time, right? Um, so I've seen this with numbers, I've seen this with tokens or some sort of chips or shape. Um, I've also seen this with soccer balls, like you can absolutely bring in kids' interest as a part of the manipulation. Um, I've also seen this with objects, like doing countdowns with marbles, right? To help kids see the tactile and the movement of time is passing, time is passing. Um, that interaction is sometimes 
what kids need because if they don't, if, if like this might be too small of a screen, it might be too hard for kids to reference. Um, just a digital like screen time is hard, right? So depending on who your student is, a countdown strip is really, really good if kids need to physically manipulate something to help them to see time passing. Um, it's also really good for negotiation in the moment, okay? So why is a countdown strip useful? Well, let me just tell you. Number one, it's low tech, okay? So if your kids have a hard time with technology or they use technology for different things, um, often kids will be on technology and we're trying to transition them off, a countdown strip is really going to help. It's like a watch, right? Um, Maggie in my book club, she's like, it's like your watch. It's always there. You don't always use it, but you can reference it whenever you need to. Um, it's more flexible than a timer because the person who's trying to help transition can be more responsive to the individual. Um, it, but it helps someone to know like when an activity is going to end because I mean, I know I'm not alone out there in thinking that it is very hard to transition when you don't want to. Or when the next activity is awful, right? But sometimes we've got to do hard things. So transition is going to be really helpful. It helps people to be, you know, kind of what's coming to predict things. Like, for example, like, when is the bus coming, right? Like, waiting for something. Um, it can also be used as a motivator. So I know, like, when I was little, my mom would do this. She'd be like, okay, four more bites. <laughs> Three more bites. Two more bites. And all of a sudden, this giant pile of green beans has turned into you know, manageable bites to help me try new foods, right? Um, it also supports when we're trying to transition away from activity that we really like. Okay, so for me, you know, right now I'm obsessed with gardening. I don't want to stop gardening. I want to stay in the garden all day. But I also need to do other things that maybe I don't want to do so much. But we all got to do hard things. But, you know, a transition, some sort of transitional tool or support can help me to see, okay, Five more minutes, four more minutes, and it helps get my brain ready to transition. Now, I'm going to say, I've said in every video, and I'm going to say it again. This is not about just getting kids to do things they don't want to do. This is not about compliance. This is about supporting kids to transition, okay? this all It doesn't mean that we're never going to do things that are hard. It just means that kids need to see that either the hard things are coming to an end or that we have to balance the fun with things that are hard, right? It's the in-between activities that sometimes kids need help transitioning with. This is not just about you got to do awful hard things all the time. No. Okay, moving on. So how do you use it? Countdown strips. <clears throat> so the best way to introduce a countdown strip is when kids are doing an activity that's not hard, something that they just do as a part of the routine. So for example, I brush my teeth every night, like many of us do. That would be a good time to be like, hey, let's look at this as a transition tool. Let's see how long we can brush our teeth for. Like say you set a timer, like we wanna make sure we brush our teeth for like five minutes. Let's practice this countdown. It's not motivating to start or end because it's just a part of the routine, but that can introduce the strategy and teach it so that you can apply it in a time when it is pretty hard to do, right? Like, you know, you really want your kid to make the bed, right? This can be, so teach it when things aren't hard. Teach it when things aren't hard. The other thing, ready? Co-construct the time. Build it with your kid. This is going to avoid the compliance battle. So things like this. So if you have five tokens, you can be like, okay, the next activity, five or four, three or four. Well, you decide, like you can be a closed option, but how much time do you need, right, within that option? Or how many bites do you want to take? We still have to take bites, but a kid can decide. You want three bites, you want four bites, right? The goal is, is not always, no, the goal is to move forward. Sometimes that takes baby steps and that's okay, okay? So we're going to co-construct. So even my wife, she'll be like, you want to fold the laundry before dinner or after dinner? I have to fold the laundry, but I have a little bit of choice in terms of the flexibility of that. And that's what this is really helpful for. So say, for example, you're introducing the countdown strip. You've built together, you want three minutes or four minutes or four tokens or five tokens, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then what we're going to do is, so say they've chosen five. We'll be like, okay, so here we go. Five. We got five more left. And then after a minute or however much the time is, okay. You got four more left, right? Don't yell. I know I'm yelling, but don't yell. Be calm. Keep it there so they can see it, right? And you slowly take away those tokens counting down until the very last one. You'll be like, okay, 
that's it. Time's up. All done. It's time for, and then we tell them what's next. Okay, show them the strip. It's even great if you can get them involved in taking the time away, right? It's great. It's a great strategy. Um, some troubleshooting. Here's some troubleshooting. It's really, and the reason why I like this is because it's really, it's really easy to get caught on like 60 seconds, okay? Time is a social construct, people. There's going to be kids that need time to transition. And so really read the people. If they're having a really hard time transitioning, it's okay that it's longer than 60 seconds, okay? Like you read, read them, slowly transition them. Eventually you may be able to decrease that time. But if you know a kid needs 30 minutes, then have that five represent intervals that go around that. If a kid is having a good time transitioning, being like, yeah, this is no problem, you can speed that up. And that's the benefit of the countdown strip. It's not, it's not trapped on a time amount. It's dependent on, the, on responding to an individual's needs, which I always think is better than any, any standard anything, right? I really like colors. Um, when I was school-based, I would use colors like traffic lights to communicate like, okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. Okay, it's yellow. We're slowing down. We're slowing down. And then red means stop, right? And so it's that it's that teaching kids of that yellow zone. That's when we're going to start signing out. That's when we're going to start saying goodbye to our friends in the video game. This is where we're going to start remembering where we left off. Like just those little tiny like kind of strategies to be like, okay, so what we do in the green zone is different than what we do in the slow down zone, right? The slow down zone is we're pressing the brakes it's time to almost stop but still gives them that time but then also have a really clear visual of what's next which you, you know what we could pull in the first then schedule or the visual support schedule to be like all these things work together to be like okay guess what's next it's time to write time to write your phd shelly Moore. um we talked about okay yeah we talked about start with start with activities that are really neutral to teach the to teach the strategy. Um I love this one. Make the countdown strips interesting. Like build them with your kids. Like you can actually make the little tokens things they love, right? Like for me, I love my dog. And so my little tokens can be little Rufy Roo. I mean, look at her. Just looking at her motivates me it doesn't have to be numbers i mean it can be but these tokens just represent the passage of time make it soccer balls make it sprinkler heads whatever whatever even at the beginning of the day be like what are your tokens do you want today right what i really like is if you it, like um kids will also transition better if they also know there's a choice coming so even if the work is hard right so i have an example here so I'm working in the garden, working in the garden. I know that I need time to transition from the garden because I love it. So I know I need to like take off my gloves, put my tools away, wash my hands, all these things. But it's way easier. You start to just think like this, right? It's way easier for me to end that activity if I know I have a choice. They're all things I need to do, but I have a choice. Like, do I want to work on a book chapter? Do I want to work on my emails? Do I want to do some PhD data analysis? Like, all of these things are things I need to do. My gardening is what balances the work, but I can still have a choice in work. And so with our kids... Even if they're things that they need to do, if we offer them a choice that gives them autonomy, that's going to help them to buy in, right? So here's just a little, just a little example. Um, my countdown strip with little Ruthie heads. You want to use Ruthie heads? You use Ruthie heads. And then you get to choose, okay, so what do I want to do for work time? And you can see it's green again because I'm going to go. I'm going to go to my emails because people think I'm dead because I hate them, but I don't hate you. Okay, here we go. So another strategy to help help uh, to show the passage of time is that don't just show kids the numbers or the roofie heads, right? Like have an, uh, a, a, a portion of the strip that's interactable, which means that they can see the visual tactile sensation of removing the object, put, covering it, putting it in a pocket, putting in the all done, something, something they can actually see the countdown of time happening. Uh, you could even do this with a with a clothespin, right? We're on the five, we're on the four, but some sort of interaction or manipulative item to show kids that it's passing, it's passing, it's passing. Um, again, I told you this, poker chips, Velcro, amazing. Here we go. All right, so this is what I want you to try today. Okay, here's your challenge of the day, is I want you to try transitioning using a countdown strip. Okay, do this. Do this first with fun activities. You can even do it with a three, two, one. 
right? It's like, how do we do this? So it's not doomsday that's coming. You know, my mom used to count. She'd be like, Shelly, three, two. Actually, she would say Shelly Ann. Shelly Ann, three, two. And I knew if she got to one, I'd be in trouble. That's not what this is about. This is about okay. It's our three. How are we going to start to get ourselves ready to move on to the next activity? It's not about compliance, okay? So co-construct, build the time. How much time do you need? This can be to move on to an activity that's hard. This can be to finish an activity that you don't want to end. Or this can be a countdown of an activity that you do want to end. So there's different ways to use this, okay? But create some countdown strips with your family. Make them interesting. Make them colorful. You know, put your pictures of your dog on them. Whatever, like build them with them because that's going to create, that's going to kind of create that buy-in for sure, okay? All right, my friends, I have a whole bunch of resources here for you. Um, I've got some blank countdown templates. Um, I have some templates that have folds. I have some um, templates that have Velcro, but I'm going to be honest with you. I did a lot of Google searching and I couldn't really find anything that I like. So I just kind of made my own. Um, all of the examples that I showed you in this video, I just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you those links. Uh, I'll put the links in the YouTube comments. So if you want to use these versions with the colors or the stop sign or the choice options, I'm going to put those there for you. You can just use them. But yeah, no, show me. Show me what you're doing. Try out the countdown strips. Um, so then we're going to have a Q&A next Saturday, 11 a.m., not 9. I got that mixed up last time. 11 a.m. PST. Um, let me see the date. I always forget to write the date down. Next Saturday at, oh, ooh, May 30th. May 30th. Come join me Saturday morning at 11 a.m. We have had some amazing conversations about some of the tools and strategies and how to use them in ways that are ethical and reflect need. Um, and just really kind of a safe place to check in. So the, I'm going to be there for you wearing my beautiful bowling pin clips. Um, but yeah, try this out. I'd love to see how it's working for you. Definitely take a look at the resources. Um, there's, there's a ton of great resources out there, but, um, I really like this one. I really like this one. And I find that the more you use it, the more you just start thinking this way. And it really, um, decreases kind of some of those power, power struggles in the home and in the school and in life. So you know, let's just not get into them by being flexible and negotiating and, you know, working through life together. Isn't that the goal? Friends, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I don't want you to miss any. And remember, new video will be out on Tuesday. Join me Saturday for the Q&A. You're amazing. I'll see you soon.